down, and intervention anyway gets low, like, holy jeez, it's going to be big damage. So our blue team introduction will be Netherrealm Man playing Bioforge Darius, best skin. Half-Hearted playing Zombie Brand, best skin. Talith PA, Wildfire Zara, they're on top of the skins. We got that. Uh, Dynov playing Judgment Kale. Uh, Armor playing Pharaoh Mumu. That's going to round our blue team. I am Skill Factory, one half of your casting crew today. And our other half of casting in the other half of this game is going to be Gander. I'm Gander of the gaming clan, Vato clan. And I am the second half of your casters. The bottom half, the other team, is going to be Pay's Evelyn Child Support. They have Infeed playing as Nidalee, Painkiller playing as Alistar, Buddha Rice playing as Ezreal, Captain Booberry playing as Swain, and Confidarius playing as Syndra. There's a clairvoyance on each team. We've learned that Vision is a really good talent to have in this game. We've seen that happen uh, all this tournament long. Something that's relatively new, new development in uh, Dominion is that revives are great. Revive is it's the spell to have. And it's really good. But now we're seeing that Clairvoyance is a really good spell to have as well because Vision comes at such a premium in this game. And you really only get it from champions like Teemo or, to a very much lesser extent, Nidalee and Shaco. And you'll get a little, little bit of it from characters like Warwick when somebody's low on health or a couple other weirder abilities like Twisted Fate. We don't see him in, in a tournament level play very often. So. When you get that vision, you can land those hits that you wouldn't be able to land before. It's got a fairly short cooldown, too, so you'll have it up for a lot of fights. I think it's really good. It seems to be effective. Revive's a great spell. Garrison's a great spell. Exhaust is an amazing spell. Ignite's a good spell. But anything outside of that, we really don't see very much of, unfortunately. Let's follow the red team. Everyone always follows the blue team. Yeah, we have uh, Alistair running the Garrison for the red team. And he's the perfect person to have it on. Unbreakable Will plus a garrison means that he's going to be alive at that tower for as long as his Unbreakable Will is up. It's very hard to bring him down when he has, you know, 60% uh, damage reduction or 50% I think at level 1. But um, it's a lot, a lot to try to burst down, especially even if you get him alone at the tower because he's CCing you while he does it. And at the same time, he's really going to need to be on key with his headbutts. He's going to need to get that Amumu out of the team to stop them from doing all that extra damage. And right here, you can see the vision coming down, trying to land those skill shots right away. Damage coming down from both teams. Ezreal just kind of shifting out of there, and now they're switching, trying to zone them back. They're going to go back, try to get this point up top, the windmill being priority right now. Captain Blueberry dropping very low. Nidoran ran eating the first exhaust, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him exhaust again as they try to make this fight happen. Infeed getting low, just backing off. Nidoran man very low. Double kill coming out for the Alistair here. Buddha Rice in a lot of trouble as well. Armor going to get that kill, but Painkiller is going to come back. And, ooh, the spear to the back of the head is going to solidify that kill. Um, Infeed getting stopped right here. A clutch heal from Infeed. Dynov not able to get that kill. Getting slowed down. A headbutt coming. The trample, not enough damage to finish him off. Painkiller just going to kind of fall back. Hopefully get back at this point. Another good pillar of flame. A good stun from Painkiller. We lost vision. He's going to get the damage on him right there, knocking him up. He will die. It looks like he has to be blue the flash to try to get the kill onto Kale, which ends up being picked up by the Nidalee. And they're just trading kills back and forth up top here. We have Buddha Rice now, the only one for the red team as Swain comes up from behind, trying to keep this point, putting good amount of damage on armor, but there's the exhaust. And Buddha Rice is going to go down without getting anybody um, for himself. Uh, Painkiller and Infi coming up from the revive. Nidalee man kind of in the middle of their team right now. Trying to lay down damage, but he's going to die as well. Captain Blueberry, very low once again on Swain. Painkiller trying to make something happen. Uh, Half-hearted, laying down his pillar of flame. No, he's not going to use it yet. He is going to eat a spear, and there's the ultimate coming out. It will get one kill with Kale's damage, and I think they're going to be able to take this point. Blue team putting a very long fight up here. Dinov getting Alistair, and that is the cap. Infeed not able to stop it. Saved by the minion. Good minion helping out up there. And oh, armor's tagged infeed, and I don't think that's good for infeed right there. Nidalee does get that hop going on for him. He gets the banish toss off. He can take infeed out. No, Buddha Rice! And suddenly Ezreal. And armor gets a free trip back to the summoner platform. He did delay the tower for a little bit, you know. Buddha Rice to get distracted and take him down. And now we're gonna see Darius and crew head up to the top of the map. 
quickly here, Tam Budarai, towards the Arcane Shift. Nope, not gonna go for that. He's gonna go for the walk away, save the Arcane Shift for later. Hedera Man is trying to connect with someone. He does get a hold of Budarai right there, starts doing the damage to him. True Shot Barrage goes off. Puts a little bit of hurt on a couple people, and that Airborne right there sets up that kill for Buddha Rice. Now Nedera Man's getting chased away, Dinov getting hassled by Squeen there. Low on hit points up on the tower, defensive garrison goes off, as Nedera Man is still kind of boxed up away from the enemy team by Alistar, and he just could not get through him to get down to the tower and start making things happen. And Alice is leading, but if you know anything about bulls, they are used to that, getting stuck with those fears. They don't care. Final from War Roar keeping him up. They're going to recap this point and bring the game even here by the time that Blue Team has a chance to react. A move coming down bottom for a gank. A miss on the stun from Confidarius. That probably is going to be the end of him. See if he can land his ultimate. He does. So he is going to trade one for one. But they are going to come out ahead with that assist and try to push this tower down as armor shoves the minions on the lane. You see pings coming down from blue side. He's going to run straight over. Buddha Rice realizing it, coming over the wall to slow him down. And it's not a good 1v1 for Amumu right now as he does not have the damage that he needs with that Hextech Sweeper to 1v1 and AD carry. And not catching the snare right there. Spain Killers, uh, you know, doesn't have any setup, uh, anyone to airborne right there. Went down a little bit late, I feel. Now Netherrealm Man is getting caught over there. Dinov coming around from the back, but getting kicked away. Now half is keeping Infeed away from this fight up here, so Nidalee's not going to be able to throw down those spears into this engagement here at all. Kind of putting the hurt in on Painkiller right now, and it could be one all away from disaster right there. You know, the save from Kale right there with the invulnerability on that intervention. And know that Nidalee's going to pick him off, though, and maybe going to clean up this whole thing. And he's going to crown Kale as well. And down just a little bit further south, Buddha Rice and Armor keep running into each other. They should really stop meeting like that. Yeah, the exhaust right there made the fight for Buddha Rice. He had his exhaust up. The 1v1 the Amumu, it would have been deathly close to see if he hadn't had exhaust. But because of the exhaust, he comes away with a kill. They're going to keep their 3 cap, uh, whittling down the uh, field of vibe here down to about 400 points before they're going to have another engagement. And Kofidari is still just doing his thing, pushing down bottom. He has been ganked, but it did not turn into a cap. And I don't think that uh, Zyra versus Syndra, I feel like Syndra has all the advantage. You have a longer range, you land a stun, you go in. There's a stun, gonna drop some more damage on her, and be way ahead. And there it is, the ultimate big burst damage, and actually gonna get a kill right there. Right as I was saying, she has the advantage, she uses it, landing that stun and getting a great kill. And the passive does not connect, unfortunately, so Syndra doesn't even, uh, doesn't even die in that exchange. Zyra does uh, pop the revive, and oh, Dara is getting caught right there. That's unfortunate for you, sir. Painkiller now is a little bit on fire due to Brand there, but there's just more members of Pay's Evelyn Child Support here, and they're gonna kinda wedge in, and they're, gonna, they're getting really aggressive. Them being on the enemy side of the map means they just don't really have any opportunity to push out. That CV reveals that Dynob is down here, and they open up on him immediately. The intervention goes off, but it, it doesn't stop the snare, unfortunately. Pyroclasm goes down, but it's not kited terribly well. Uh, so they split up and it doesn't get to chain. Now Half Hard down here takes one CC from Alistar. Yeah, pops the ultimate here. Half Hard gets chased out of the fight. And every single member of Field of Five either got weakened or killed in that. And they just kind of all had to scatter, unfortunately. Painkiller staying on Half Hearted, actually. Gonna keep him busy for a little while. Cinder coming around from the side is gonna pick up the kill on him. Now Tal FBA down here really isn't in a position to kind of push out and try and do anything to Painkiller. There's a neutral point up at the top end of the map here, and whoa, Envy taking down Darius all of a sudden up there. So now it's just armor against two people, but both of them are sort of ranged champions, and armor is kind of a little, a little bit of trouble dealing with those, unfortunately. Yeah, I think he's going to bandage toss back in. He did get the CV down. He's got the help. Kale is there. He does not have the intervention onto Amumu. Amumu's going to be dying very slowly right here. Infeed very low, but Captain Blueberry and Dinov are in trouble. Even though Dinov got half health, he still has a good advantage, but Painkiller's coming across, and he's going to bring the paint and the CC. That spear just landing perfectly, and it's so easy to land a spear when somebody's stunned into a wall and then knocked airborne. Stun airborne combo sets it up. It's like having a laser targeter. And Nidalee is an intercontinental ballistic missile. 
middle of the map. Dari is going to pick up the Storm Shield right here to give him that extra durability and that extra damage, which is a good thing to have, especially since he's really not in a position to push right now. And if you don't have, a, if you're not in a spot where you can actually make a play, go ahead and do something that will set up a play for later. Caught out above Buddha Rice and Painkiller, making short work of him. Painkiller actually came around and put him in a bad position. Now, Dinov, Nedore Man, a 3v3, a great bandage toss coming across on a Buddha Rice. Another apprehend. Buddha Rice going over the wall there. Very good job. Does not get off the true shot barrage. The ult coming down on himself. Dinov trying to live through this. The first dunk coming down. The second dunk coming down. A double kill for Nedore Man. And I think now that he has a black cleaver, he's going to be putting in a good amount of damage. Ooh, almost walked into that spear, ending his life. But he will back right now and spend some of that gold from his slam jam fest, the two kills from the dunks, and he still has his ultimate up now. A half hard coming up to the top here. Now, half hard could end in Italy potentially with a little bit of setup because the damage from Brain is pretty high. And Nidalee, as you can see right here, not terribly durable. Yeah, it does have a little bit of health with Blackfire Torch, but doesn't really have anything going resistance wise yet, possibly at all for this game. But he yeah. really can't afford to try and start that fight solo because Nidalee in cat form has a lot of burst and can really take him down pretty quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if he does bait this out. They are trying to wait. Painkiller is sitting in the brush, looking to get an engagement. Captain Blueberry going to go in first. Dino in a bad position, getting CC'd to death. Instantly gibbed by those three. And now it's down to a 3v3 with Nidalee coming up from behind to start casting spears. The ult coming out from Half-Hearted, not doing much damage whatsoever. Painkiller going in, still wanting to engage on this, and they have four people, and Pays Inland Child Support is just dominating their side of the map right now. They are just sitting back, they are chucking spears, knocking people airborne. Alistair doing a great job. Look at that damage come out of Alistair. The True Shot Barrage picking up that kill, and now he's going to be popping his ultimate, staying in. I wouldn't be surprised to see them dive as long as that ultimate stays up. Armor coming in with the Curse of the Sad Mummy. But they're not able to get any kills except for the Nidalee. He tries to dunk Painkiller. Painkiller is bleeding it out. See if there's another triumphant roar. He will live with just single digit HP right there. And once again, a very, very sad fight for, for, uh, excuse me, FTV, who even had a great engagement, but could not convert into the kills they needed. It feels, oh, Talith PA, I'm so sorry. That was so, just, that setup was so beautiful down there. Cinder connected with the stun, Envy throwing the spear. Great, great play in the bottom lane there. An armor I don't think he's going to be able to deal with Envy either, unfortunately. It does get the cat form going, turns around. Oh, animation canceling into a cat kick right there. It's kind of interesting to see. Now Painkiller up at the top, kind of trying to keep people back away from Buddha Rice. We'll see if Alistar sets up for any more snipes as this game goes on. But I think that Kale really here... It is one of those things that if they can delay long enough, Kale could get pretty dangerous. But as of yet, Kale hasn't really had any super big contributions to any of these fights. Usually Kale just gets caught out and killed before anything serious goes down. And oh, half-hearted, that spear don't stand in that. It does not belong in your spleen and getting caught right there by Ezreal and Alistar. He's going to get taken down. Darius is going to go with him. They're going to pop those revives. They're going to get back on the field immediately. And thankfully, that's going to stop any play that they could have made for the refinery. If they did not have those revives, Paisley and Child Support would have been able to push for and possibly get the refinery in that exchange. Yeah, Nidoran Man now looking very tanky. A great apprehend over the wall. Going for the dunk. It will not reset his ultimate, but it was enough to take down Nidalee. Uh, Painkiller popping the Unbreakable Will, trying to defend this turret. But Buddha Rice is going to be in a lot of trouble. He really needs to get distance from the Starius and Armor right now. Armor landed the bandage toss, but Darius not following through. The True Doctor Barrage coming across. Buddha Rice in a lot of trouble. He does not have any mana left. The bleeds would be enough to kill him right now, but it looks like he's going to get shut down as Captain Blueberry whittles down the two of them in the 2v2. Meanwhile, up top, Painkiller in a lot of trouble. He is not going to be able to do much against Dinov and Half-Hearted right now, and they're going to take the windmill and hopefully gain some more ground back here. Painkiller coming back in. Captain Blueberry in a lot of trouble taking the hits from Dinov and Half-Hearted, and he will die as well with the revive coming out now. Now Feel the Vibe has gotten control of the windmill, but we'll see if they can hold on to it. Buddha Rice, oh, that arcade shift, nice move right there, goes straight over and takes out Brand, follows it up, circling around, taking care of Darius. Amumu is on his way back up, but so is Swain, and Amumu is not going to get there in time to stop the neutral. They see it with the clairvoyance anyway. So the best thing you can do now is try and keep it from getting like fully capped up here at this top point. 
And with Ezreal there zoning him as hard as he is, and with the threat of Envy poking with the Nidalee Spears, he's just he's not going to be able to get it. Yeah, pays up on child support. Really going to do a good job at zoning. Um, Painkiller, no matter who they are buddying up with, the Alistair in any damage is doing a great job. As you see down bottom, Syndra getting another kill with Painkiller. Painkiller trying to bait out some damage. A wasted ult by Tal of PA. Infeed getting caught out a little bit by Half-Hearted, but not going to be worried about it. Confarius, a great job. Actually picks up the plant, does not try to stun anybody with it, but just keeps it away from Infeed as they try to poke down with those spears. Uh, Darius coming up, wanting to go with a 1v1 with Captain Booberry. Knows that he has the advantage right now. He's got plenty of damage to take uh, down that Swain in a 1v1. But unfortunately, that's not how this game works. Uh, Buddha Rice getting a little too close there. Almost eating a snare by Tal PA. A good stun by Confarius, but they're still just kind of poking each other. No huge commitment. Captain Blueberry in there way too far. Getting dunked. And I feel like that was a wasted Amumu ultimate, though. He did pop Curse of the Sad Mummy to get that kill. Tal PA is now going to go down to Confarius. And five blue people are going to come and take her out just for being so cheeky. They like their plant person, and they want her to live a little bit longer. And Dinov's going to zone... Um, Buddha Rice back until Buddha Rice gets a little bit more health from his teammates. He does not want to go in 1v1. He is more of a poke and carry, and there's Nidalee to help him out. And oh, Nidalee, man, the Blackfire Torch damage! That's, that's unfortunate for him right there, and now Dynop trying to kind of hold things down. He is keeping three people down here, though. There's three people's attention. They're only just now starting to shift up towards the top of the map. We got Bran and Amumu up top. Now, Bran's got percent damage, and so is Amumu, which is something that Alistar is deadly allergic to, because it's one of the few things that will actually seriously kill him. The fact that he's so tanky. We got a shot coming up. Not going to connect with anyone, though, unfortunately, though. Two shot a little bit too far away, and they do get the neutral off. They can start this fight if they want to, but oh, that Nidalee Spear right there. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get Alley down fast enough to actually get a full cap on the tower, but they were able to stop, get it neutral and stop the clock temporarily. However, they're going to lose two of their best people in exchange. I mean, they lose Bran, who's got all the AoE damage. They lose Amumu, who's got the rest of the AoE damage. So now they just have two people who are a little bit better at more single or lesser target DPS. So in a situation like this, we're going to see this play right here, where Dynov comes down to the bottom here to deal with Confidarius. Can't make a play up for top. Gank bottom. Follow the engage with flow chart a little bit right there. And Ooh. oh, completely denied with the innervation right there. Dynov hangs around for a second to try and take care of Confidarius, knowing that he didn't really have any way to escape. Was not able to do so. Unfortunately, the snare does not land, so Tal Bay is going to be able to get away. See the vision goes off right there, and oh, the spear just narrowly missing. The slow from Captain Booberry made it so that Talon Ooh. didn't step into that first one. The and that spear one just not. After he got slowed from that bird, that spear landed very well. And even though it was a great kill ultimate, it was just slowing down the inevitable. They did get the neutral on that point, which is something they needed. But right now, they are tapping the top point. They have two people up top, as bottom seems to be focused by Pezzo and Child Support right now. And they might be able to regain a little Talk bit of ground. Put it back. Thank you. He was stealing Cyrus' plant, man. He likes to be able to pick up those plants. He actually, I don't think he's seen a throw and plant at anybody, but he's just kind of picked them up and thrown them over a wall. He's like, this, this plant's my way. I want to get the health relic. Toss it over the wall. Uh, but Alistair, man, what a great job he's doing uh, defending the points. Painkiller being pretty much, you can't even 2v1 him right now at a point. If he has that tower on his side, not only that, but he has, what, 106 AP. So his headbutt and pulverize being maxed right now. They're doing a good amount of damage. Uh, half hard getting caught by Buddha Rice and Painkill over here. Good, some good bounce off the Pyroclasm. Nice dodge on that safety intervention just for good measure right now. And now Painkiller is the immovable object, so they're just going to walk right around him. You see Armor and Dynop heading away from Alistar and towards the people they can actually uh, kill, except they got killed first, unfortunately, because Nidalee Spear is really good. See down here, Netherman, Half Hard, we're still dealing true damage, doesn't care, unfortunately. Darius giving him the chip chop right there, and we're going to see two for one special. Darius making a withdrawal from the bank of enemy champions, going to head up to the top, and please don't walk straight into a spear. He tried Ooh, to. Barely dodged that, and that spear almost connected with Half Hearted as well, who is very close to that. And now the spears, everybody's so low that they're worried about these spears. Armor dropping, but Nidoray Man pulling him in, and there's the Witch Cap being popped by Infeed. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Nidoray Man does have the dunk up and will get a third dunk in a row for Nidoray Man. I don't think they're going to cap this, though. Ezreal's back, the two shot barrage for one, and does not land that last Mystic shot. There it is. 
picking up the kill on on there. Oh. Ooh. And he looked for a blind mystic shot into the bush, but it was a very good spot to go back for Darius there. Unfortunately, the arcane shift was up, and he just shifted over and got the free keep seeking attack onto that Darius. And meanwhile, Painkiller actually going for the refinery, putting a little bit back on it. Um, armor not able to land a bandage toss. Even if he did, I don't think he wants to 1v1 the Alistair right now anyways. I mean, it's just a waste of mana and a waste of time. He needs some teammates to be able to take down that bull. Yep, and he's not BFT Amu either, so he doesn't get that extra damage in on his AoE though. However, Alistar and Amumu not in this fight is going to kind of change things a little bit because there's no main tank here. half heart just barely able to get away. 44 hit points right there. Has to kind of hang back. Throws in a Seer just to kind of poke a little bit, but he knows he can't get too close to that or he'll get taken down. Dynov in the bottom. Bad things. Whoa, nice dodge. Dynov. Intervention right at the last second. Going to keep him alive for a little bit longer there. Buy some time maybe to recall or is he just going to grab that relic? Looks like he's going to stay for a little while and try and be opportunistic about things down here. And he goes, that's that arcade shift over there. Dynov, I'm scared for you, man. I'm so sad, Dynov. Tyler's PA still is doing a pretty good job of zoning up here, but they don't have the plant. Zyra, you can have it back. Confederate was done with it. You gotta watch out for that. Yeah, that Stranglethorn is enough damage to just kill Ezreal. It didn't even need the second proc. Armor going after Painkiller right now, and they're putting damage, but the ultimate coming out of the Alistair, and I don't think they're going to be able to chase into this. There's too many little Nidalee Spears coming at them. They're going to try to keep putting damage on the Painkiller. He does not have his ultimate up to capitalize on this kill, but it will be enough with the bleeds. He is going to get a heal off there. Nidalee Man might be in a little bit of trouble here. Now has to try to take out in feed, and very, very tanky Nidalee Man. Does have the Frozen Mallet. A great apprehend there. Slowing the Nidalee. Nidalee now worried for its own life as she runs out of mana trying to defend this point up top, but he doesn't look like he wants to go in. He's going to go back. He doesn't want to just waste his life for nothing. They are losing points right now. They are ticking away. They only have 40 points left. They need to get a cap right now or feel the vibe. is going to go 1-1 and bring us to a game three. And Talith, though, I just every time that, uh, that Syndra gets close, Zyra just doesn't really deal with that. I mean, look at Cyrus, look at Talos Bill right here. It's just pen, 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 pen. And that, that seems to have not been treating him terribly well. He's been really good at managing the minions and things, but not so much for the champions. The middle of the map, though, this might be the last big engagement of the game, unfortunately. An intervention that saves Amuma right there. Curse the Sad Mummy went off, but they didn't really get a lot out. Dynov, that's a Blackfire Taurus that's on you! And he's gonna be okay. Thankfully, Netherite Man now getting low on hit points right there. Pulls Infeed in, and he's going to try and get rid of Infeed. The exhaust goes off right there, but there's the deny with the Wooglets. And this one skill shot into disaster, but Amumu... I see what you're doing, Amumu. Look at the little guy. He found a tower to be his friend. Talos basically got the health relic down here at the bottom. Takes another uh, hit. And, oh, Confidarius saw that coming. But did he see that? No, he did not. No, Amumu... Definitely just delaying the inevitable of this game. Uh, Buddha Rice almost neutralizing down bottom, but Kale coming up from behind and two-shotting that Ezreal. A big fight going down up top here. They might come out ahead of this if they can get on to Infeed, but they're not even going for that. They're going for Painkiller, who is the tank. I mean, granted, Painkiller has a little bit of AP, but going after that tank is not going to help them kill anybody. Pack to Captain Blueberry now, rezzed up, full HP, Ravenous Flock engaged, and not going to care whether half heart is landing his skill shots or Nidoray Man, and he's going to come in and solidify this point for the red team. And they have to keep this thing neutral for a little while, because if it does get captured, it's going to be almost impossible for them to capture it in the amount of time that they would need in order to take it back to full. So they need to keep this thing neutral. half is able to get Nidalee off of it, thankfully, for a little bit, but a shot comes up from Ezreal, so we don't have to worry about any last-minute interrupt from him, since that's going to be on cooldown now. And Painkiller is just the unseatable beast right here, but he's finally been taken down. It took the entire team to do it, though. So now it's Cap and Booberry and Infeed. And to stay in the game, they're going to have to get a hold of this tower, but they can't really cap it safely as long as Nidalee is alive to be able to poke. So they have to send a couple people up here to deal with her, and all that does is buy more time for our allies. You see the intervention of Wooblets, both things kind of cancel each other out. But in the bottom lane, Syndra able to take down Zyra and secure the point to bring it home. Yeah, it would have been all invade anyways. The